Mark is saying, I have an eight-year-old raised secular, and he's starting to ponder existential questions in life now, and is completely terrified about the idea that everything is temporary, and had been expressing to me how much he wanted ideas like heaven or angels or God to be real. I do not want to lie to him just so he would feel better, but it breaks my heart to see how scary the idea is for him at the time, and I can see how religion offers parents and children comfort when wrestling with existential questions. That being that said, what are some ways to respond with him tearfully when he tearfully asks if I would always be with him now and whatever comes next? This is a really tough question. I have some very strong views about this, and I think some people are not going to be happy with my answer. Okay. Oh, oh boy. Okay, um, guys. The I okay. First of all, to anybody who says that my views on this topic is not correct because I am not a parent, and if you say I am a parent, and you, I mean you don't have any kids. So you shouldn't be able to, you shouldn't be in a position to tell people with kids what to do with their kids. I will yeah, respond yes. to that. Wait, let me let me finish. I will respond to that that I am already a better parent than you without a kid. Okay. I know that me without a kid, I can already tell that I would outparent people that already have kids. I would outparent most people. Okay. So I'm not talking about our patron, by the way. I'm just talking our patron probably is a better parent than me, but most people who criticize me for like, like they're like, I give advice to like, oh guys, you shouldn't give your kids unhealthy food. They're like, Armin, you have no idea how hard it is to give my, give your kid broccoli and stuff like all oh, Well, there's your problem. You're trying to give them broccoli. You know how easy it is to make healthy Armin. food actually like taste. Anyways. Okay. So yeah, I already know that I'm a better parent than that person that told okay. me that. Uh, but anyways, with regards to this question, I think, Again, I'm I'm not a, a better criticism of me would be I'm not a psychologist, I'm not an expert, so take everything I'm saying with a don't take it with a grain of salt because I'm not a parent, okay? Because this knowledge is available, even if you're not a parent, you could get this knowledge. This information is out there, okay? But because I'm not an expert, for that reason, don't take everything I'm saying with a grain of salt. That's a better reason to be skeptical about what I'm saying. Um, and you could tell me why I'm wrong if I if you think so. Um, but probably I'm not, um, what I think as a parent, if your goal is to shield your kid from being upset, I think that's already a, the wrong m mindset. Okay. It's a, I, I think, if, yeah, I think like, if you like, oh my God, my kid is upset and experiencing sadness, how could I make this stop? I think you might make you might raise your kid in a situation where tough life realities in life is going to be harder for them to tolerate i know as a parent it's, go it's going to be difficult to watch your child having to struggle with certain emotional things and want to make that go away immediately but maybe they need to struggle with certain things maybe that's the the you know, the pain that they're experiencing is going to, is something, it's, it's kind of like a vaccine. You know what I mean? They need to develop the emotional, um, they need to, they need to, ex, you know, express this emotion. I think the environment that you want to, like if a, if, a, if a child is becoming aware of death and the fact that that's reality and they, they're sad about it, instead of say, thinking, how could I make the sadness go away? No, the sadness, let the sadness be there. I know it's tough as a parent to, to watch your child experience sadness, but they need to deal with this. Instead, I think as a parent, your role should be to, you, to let them express it. You know what I mean? To, to invite them to go through it, think about why it's making them sad. Instead of trying to make them not sad, let them create this environment where they feel like they've, they can share their sadness with you and you are a parent that is willing to be there and listen to it and receive their expression of sadness so use this as an opportunity to demonstrate to them that you are a 
a hear, you have a he, hearing ear at always for them and you are a reliable person to go to to share the things that they're struggling with and also use this as an opportunity for them to be able to reflect on the thoughts that they're having and as, as a to become more methodology you have have a better understanding of their own feelings and how to deal with them and how to compartmentalize it and how to analyze it maybe ask them questions hug them while they're teary, being teary eyes about them and ask them question why you know why do you feel like this and then make them show them that you're interested in their feelings and their thoughts and what they're going through this is a powerful opportunity for you to demonstrate your role in their life when they go through struggle and also by delaying the set like you would want them actually to go through the sadness in in pieces you know what i mean because at some point they're going to exper experience death in the family okay and you might think like oh no they're feeling sad well this sadness that they're experiencing right now is offloading some of the sadness the shock from an actual death that they're going to experience one day in the family so it's better for them to be prepared and have a philosophy of what death is and what it means and have that sadness come to them in pieces rather than it coming to them with a shock, right? So this is a good thing that they're experiencing some sadness right now because this is offloading some of the extreme shock from a death that they may, may, may be experiencing when the death comes. Like if they have no experience with this sadness right now and all of a sudden it comes at them without this level of preparation, you know, the, it, it might be even more devastating. So let them go through the sadness so that they have, they are more prepared to accept death as part of reality. And in fact, I would encourage you to uh, introduce more experience with death in their life by getting a, you know, maybe a goldfish and then maybe a cat. So they, you know, they fall in love, they, lo they lose, they notice that yes, the death was a tragic part of that experience, but overall, they had they the ex the love relationship that they have with a pet or with a cat or a dog the the positive from that was outweighed the negative so even the death came as a shock they wouldn't want to take that away like for example if you have a kid a cat that you love and you, you raise and then they die even though you notice that the death was tragic would you say like would you prefer that that experience with the cat was never there they would not say that. So they notice like, yes, death is a tragic part of life, but it's the price that we pay for the positive experiences that we have with that, with those loved ones, right? So the net is positive at the end and you could, these things can be communicated with somebody, but it could also be experienced through pets. I think it's a, it's a powerful way of doing it. So you wanna, I keep talking, you want to say things, I'm not letting you go on. Um, yeah, I think your advice is really good. Um, a job of a parent is not necessarily to make their kids feel better, but to actually teach them how to cope and to cope in the healthiest way possible. Right. So in my household, I was overly sheltered and protect, like overly protected in a lot of ways. Um, and so when I was a young adult and entering into the world, I was given no tools how to actually deal with stressful, real life, scary, messy situations, right? So what did that cause? A whole lot of anxiety because I've just been hidden away from the bad and ugly things in life that doesn't make them not exist, right? But now I'm at the disadvantage of not knowing how to tackle them. So I always err, I mean, I'm not a parent, <laughs> but <laughs> I, I would always err on the sides of more conversation, more education about these things to help them be prepared and not blindsided by all of the ugly, horrible, despicable things about life that, you know, go far beyond death, like drug use or something, you know, like um, people need to, young adults need to know how to handle situations like that in a real world, frank kind of way in um not be permanently protected um by the harsh realities that we live in um but i think you sound like a parent that's very attentive to their their child's needs like the fact that you are so tuned in to how your child is starting to think about these existential questions and express some anxiety over it um i think that alone you're probably more equipped to be 
um, better at what's the word I'm looking for? Like really being present for your child. And I think that's something you can emphasize to him as well. I mean, it's kind of hard because he's a little boy and young kids are not, um, their conception of time and long-term reward is, you know, very different. That's something you gain la later in life. But the idea of like, you know, this is something that is very sad about life but that's why it's so important that we love each other right now you know and be kind to each other as best as we can now um i think that's an important lesson for young children yeah yeah actually it's a good point that you mentioned that we might not be parents but we we were kids so we have that experience we we were <laughs> true we, we were children we were children of parents uh one thing i also want to say i think like i already mentioned that there's this miss i think there's this misunderstanding uh misconception by a lot of parents that they need to shield their children from any negative experience and i think that's probably wrong that's, a, um, that's a detriment to your child yeah Another thing that I think it's a, a misconception, especially as the child grows, is I think a lot of people think that the role of the parents is that to answer these questions. And I think in many, not all, but in many situations, the role of the parents is supposed to be to listen and invite questioning and question and listen rather than to give answers to, to in, encourage your child to explore the ideas so themselves true. right again non-judgmental be yes. non-judgmental because like that wasn't an option in my household i had to go outwards to find information about most of i don't know right. bad shit in life yeah by the way this this is really conditional in the age of the child because if your child is like three or four <laughs> you need to be a source of stability in their life so you can't you know if they ask asking questions uh, at you know age three four five you probably should just show them that you have answers um, well, and that you are a reliable per person for I, I just think like maybe an older age maybe this role will change but you don't want to introduce uh instability like a three or four or five year old kid you don't want to make them feel like you are not a source of stability and answers in, in their life. So it really do, does depend on the age as well, but go ahead. Yeah, obviously keep it age appropriate, but that's actually why I think letting the children lead in this particular instance is helpful because the kid is starting to pick up on stuff in their environment and they're asking the authority, the foundation in their life about what they're starting to learn about their environment, you know? so. There, that's the difference between bringing something to a kid what's maybe not age appropriate before they're ready versus the kid noticing something and being like, what's up with this? And going to their foundation to find a sense of answers. Do you, does the difference there make sense? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, um, basically what I'm saying is that if a, if a two-year-old asks me as a father why the sky is blue, I would completely be different than if like a eight-year-old asks me the same question, right? If the two-year-old asks me, I would like come up with a cute answer um, that is interesting and make them curious. If an eight-year-old asks me, I would like, this, that would be an excuse to go on a journey for answers together. That, that would be a different story. Anyways. Hey guys, if you're a fan of Blasphemy and Sexy Callie, you know, like me, then you need to be sure to subscribe to our newsletter, link in the description below. Because if you subscribe, we will send you a free copy of our Blasphemous Art ebook. And let me tell you, it is the tastiest Blasphemy that you can find anywhere available today. And we are so generous with our blasphemy that we continue to send you more blasphemy every week. So make sure to subscribe. Link in the description below.